Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for being here today. My name is Benjamin Silverstone. I'm a jQuery analyst here at ABG who covers Gumspace, which is a Swedish-listed, Danish-based nano satellite company. Today, we have the pleasure of having Tor Stalsko, CFO, presenting Gumspace today. Without any further ado, Tolls, I will give the word over to you. Thank you, Benjamin. And uh, I'm happy to be here in, uh, in Sweden also, because uh, in the Nordic, that is the, the region of, of space, and that's what I'm going to talk a little about today. But first of all, I want to introduce myself. My name is Trolls Dalsgaard. I'm the CFO, CFO in uh, Gumspace, and I have been that, uh, have that position for the last nine years. I have a background coming from the, from the audit industry, being hired in some of the two of the, the big four companies. So let's just go straight ahead. And what you can see on the on screen in front of you is a spacecraft that we have designed. So that's what Scum Space do. We are a manufacturer. We are an engineering company that design, we produce, we do the hardware. We actually facilitate launching satellites too. And we also provide operating satellites for other customers. But let me get back to that. First of all, I'll start with two slides about our financials. Uh, and what you see is that we have an, an order intake. You see we have a declining order intake. But at the same time, our backlog the number is not listed here, but the backlog uh, is the same as two years of last 12 months revenue. So we have a backlog of more than close to 440 million Swedes. That's also explaining why we have been ramping up on, on employees, because we need a lot of engineers, a lot of staff to run our oper operations. But what you also see here is on the revenue and even more on the operating profit, the EBIT margin that we took a quite significant drop here in the third quarter, both when it comes to revenue and also and especially when it comes to EBIT. The reason is that we suspended a large order uh, for, for a significant, uh, significant customer, and we took a major uh, impact on that. So we have accounted for that, even though it is a suspension of that order, we have accounted for it as it is a termination, removing it from the order book, removing the revenue, take a provision for loss on that customer, and that have a big negative impact. If you look on the underlining activity, removing this, what we define as a one-time effect and the ripple effect of that order, our activity level is still growing. We underline we have a quarter in Q3 that is still growing according to our, to our plans. So just to make that sure, uh, we took a quite significant negative impact on that suspension on the way we accounted for us, uh, but we see it as a one-time effect going forward. So let me explain a little more about Gumspace. Um, we are a company uh, founded in 2007. What we're really good at is within the come to uh, radio uh, intelligence, meaning that we are really good in doing anything with a radio, and a radio can produce, uh, can fulfill a lot of missions. We have, uh, and we consider ourselves as the as the technology leader within this uh, experience uh, within this uh, niche industry. Since we were listed in uh, 2016, we have invested more than 800 million into technology development. And I'm afraid we're not done yet because it's a long journey and, and space is capital intensive. So given that we are such a young company, we still have a significant track record. We have more, the way you accounted for it, uh, mission in space uh, equal uh, 75 mission. So we have our products in space, tested in space, operating in space. More than 50 years of our products lifetime in orbit we are a, a couple of hundred employees, have a, a growth roughly about 40%, coming from, of course, a low number, but as today. And most important, we have an order backlog consisting of approximately two years of, of last uh, 12 months revenue. So a short glimpse into the history in, in our industry and, and in space in general. And if you see to, to your uh, left, and 2016, where we come from, where there was uh, 14 uh, 
uh, of satellites in our industry. You see a, a total of 110, 11 satellite launch into space at that year to where we were uh, end of 2021, where it was 1,336 satellites. So it's a massive growth in number of satellite being launched into space. We can put more or less a single person's name on the majority of those, and his name is uh, Elon Musk, which is uh, Starling, uh, the founder of Tesla and so on, if, if you should not know him. He's been quite um, uh, active since all of uh, the last couple of years. So that's, that's where the majority of the satellites go into. But still underlying, we have here micro and nano satellites. So to give a little definition of that, that satellite, you see here the, the mini satellites go up to start from 100 kilograms. So we are in, in much smaller satellites. So this side's satellites. And that's what we are targeting with our satellites. And still you see a growth where there was just in the nano satellites 270 and then some more also in the, in the, in the micro satellites, a little larger satellites. And that's where we are in. So that's, that's, the, that's the track record of this market. So we have made a strategic plan that says we want to be European champion in radio-based nano and microsat sp uh, space infrastructure solution. It's a short title, but what it really means is we want to be the technology leader in Europe. And we believe we have a very good uh, footprint and a, a backlog to do so with the history we have already. We also see that we estimate, as it is today, what we're delivering, it's a 1 billion US market. And you also see on the EBIT market, market on, the, on the other, uh, on the graph over there, that we are here at, at a low EBIT margin. And just to give you some example of that, today, a lot of the deliveries we do is by doing a lot of engineering and less uh, product content, meaning this scale bit, we're not able to scale operations the same way. We scale by increasing our number of staff because we need to deliver a lot of engineering. So that's where we are today. We have among, we believe, the best technology platform, but we have very difficult making money of it, making profit of it. So we're struggling with that. Most of the company, almost everybody in this industry are not making profit. Everybody is having a loss. It's an industry where everybody is investing into. So even though we are not specific proud of our numbers, they are relatively much better than many of our competitors. So what we have a plan for is to move into this constellation. So we need to have more standard products into our deliveries. And that's the plan. That's what we have a strategic plan to go through. And by doing so, we can expand our market to around 4 billion and we can increase our margin to 15%. That's our view. At the end of that, we actually intend to go into being an infrastructure provider. Uh, we're not going to be a SaaS company, but we're going to be satellite infrastructure as a service, meaning we want to go in a situation where we can actually lease out our satellites, but we don't want to take the financial and techno technology risk on those products yet. We want still the customers to bear that, and we are not there yet. So step one is to move up and have more standard content, uh, standard content in our deliveries to go to the constellation manufacturer. So, as it is today, one third of our deliveries are engineering. That's what you see on the circle there. That means that every time we have to produce revenue, then two thirds of that have to come from engineering effort, meaning hours, people, engineering, and one third from production, manufacturing of hardware. We have a very attractive margin on the hardware part, but we are really struggling on making profit on the engineering. This is a world global market. We are located in some of the regions, Sweden, Denmark, Luxembourg, Europe. Our salaries are on a high level because we have really skilled and bright people, but it's, it put pressure on the margin, on the earning capacity in a company. So the way, and we cannot eliminate engineering in our deliveries. So our plan is to turn it around. So we have two thirds of our revenue coming from Standard for reuse 
and one out of three of, our, of the liver is true engineering work. And to do that, we need to standardize a product portfolio. We also need to develop something new. And least of all, we need to make sure that our customer understand that they are better off choosing our standard platform because it can solve most of their missions with this standard, with some one-third bespoke content. So how would a satellite look like? That, and that's the one we have on, on the screen. And uh, it's called Project Pause because we're having uh, the, the uh, Volkswagen Group have uh, Pause and they have a consultancy company called Pause. So we're actually having somebody from the car industry to help us in this transition, industrialize our product offering. And to do that, we come up with a plan that we can actually have one platform in two versions. Depending on the missions, and the mission you see here in the, in the below, if it's something in sickness intelligence, that could be in listening into position of ships, planes. Um, if you want to do some uh, monitoring of the atmosphere, you don't need so much power. So we have a model with a lower power consumption. The platform has a lower power. And then we have other uh, areas where you see we need much more power. That's the, the VAT you see in the bottom here. So we have basically the same platform. But then we need to have like a, a, as you can see, a premium version that can generate a lot of more power. And power is generated by the solar panels you see on top and the amount of batteries you have within the system. And if you want to do uh, missions where you want to do, for example, VFF, if you want to use our satellites to connect planes so you can actually talk to the planes through satellites with an uh, existing infrastructure like VHF, you will need such a solution. It will also be for communication platform. If you have data going back and forward uh, with, with more bandwidth, you need more power. And that's the platform that we have, uh, that we have developed for this. So the essence of our, of our strategy, what we want to achieve now is that it's uh, three operational goals. The time to market, the time it takes for us to to have the final specification cleared out and, and signed by the customers to we can deliver to the customer have to be reduced from 12 to six months. So it's time to market. Second, we need to increase our earning and uh, also having less risk in our products. We need to have double the standard content in our deliveries. So that's the, that's the, third, the second thing. That also makes us able to increase our volume significantly. And coming from, we are higher now than, than five satellite, satellites a year, probably more around 10. But with this setup, we can actually scale up our production to more something like 100 satellites a year. So that's, that's a goal. That's what we want to, uh, that's what, how we want to transform the company to be this constellation manufacturer, as I put in, in, in the previous uh, 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 deck or what you saw the presentation. So now I'll go, the last part of my presentation will be about looking forward, where this marking headed. You saw the, big, the numbers from 2015 to 21, how it was growing, and we believe, and not just us, also market analysts believe that this market is still going to grow. It's probably going to be a factor 10 to, uh, for 2020, 30, 2030 with a quite significant growth to 32% and emeralds. So if, if, if I dive in a little in this, where do we have our numbers from? We, we, can, we can do two things. So I have uh, two slides here. You can take, you can sum up all the, all the constellation only being, being released. You can go into database seeing what's the plans, and then you can sum up, and then you can see we, within reads and what we can actually count up is something like uh, 13,500 satellites. You can also look into what have all the constellation registered. They have been doing filing because when you have to send up a satellite, you need to register so you can have a, a license you can have because you need a frequency to send the sat satellite uh, signal. And if you take those numbers, then we're looking into 24,000 satellites within those, this period of time. We have decided to base our assumption on the lower number here. So we are, we are aiming for, we are saying that 13,500 satellites, what's the potential 
for us in this, because this is the entire market. And as you remember, we are only seeking for the micro and nano satellites. So there will be some part of the market that we are not f fulfilling. And if we, uh, if we take some assumptions about, it's depending on the satellite price, uh, $250,000 for, for one of the, the micro or the, the, the nano satellites and a, a half million dollars for, um, for a micro satellite, a, a little larger satellite, we come up with some numbers projecting to somewhere around 750 million uh, in hardware sales. And if we go all the way and adding on the infrastructure, the service, because then we're adding the launch, insurance, operating the satellites too, something that we have as capabilities already, but are not actively uh, um, selling now at, at, at the moment, then we can reach a number where, where we are close to uh, 2 billion uh, in, in, in 2030. We will not capture the entire of this market. So a fraction of that is where we look into and that's why we see if we project to where we have, as you see, assume, assuming a market growth that is actually lower than the market, the market is growing plus 30%. We are actually aiming for probably not going to get all of those uh, products to us. So we'll actually just continuing uh, with, with a lower grade, 26%. Then we are looking into that we, in this period of time, if you accumulate those shares, uh, something like 700 million US dollars in, in revenue potential, aiming at the one, 165 in, in 2030. So that's kind of where we are, where we are, where we are heading. So last slide to sum up all the things I've been saying here, um, and it has a lot of content this uh, this slide, slide, but it's actually to show you. What's going to happen for us to succeeding in our 2030 plan? We have some mission and business opportunity. We need to constellation preparation 24, the constellation deployment in 25. We are already, the next thing is, is in our strategy. We have made the decision about the strategy. Uh, we are starting to implement this strategy, increasing our product content, but there'll be a lot of steps going through. When it comes to the uh, inf space infrastructure service, it's m much later in, in that period of time. So that's something we haven't started yet, but something that we'll uh, begin in on a, on a later stage. We need to open some office. We open the office in, in France uh, this year, and we're probably going to, on a later stage, be more active within the US. But as we said, we're going to be a European champion first before we can be expanding much more in, in, in US. And to do that, it requires capital. So one thing we have done uh, early this year, we took in a new uh, major investor. Uh, his name is uh, Peter Hargrave. Um, to, to, uh, today he has around close to 20% to of the shares. So he's a our, our leading investor. We also did a, a decision about doing a a right issue next year to facilitate, to finance our plans. That has been done in a two-step model where we took in a convertible loan that is going to be uh, converted into these shares in the right issue. So that will happen early next year. On top of that, we have secured a credit facility, 18 million euro equals close to 200 million Swedes uh, by the European Investment Bank to finalize those, uh, to support our, our growth plans here. So with that, I would say that was the, the condensed version of, of GOMSpace. Thank you very much, Tolz. We appreciate the thorough presentation and we will now do the Q&A session. A first question will be in terms of the short-term bumps in the road that we've seen in the last quarter. There's been some guidance changes due to some customer in customer uncertainty in terms of willingness to pay. Could you elaborate a little bit about what happened in Q3 and also how you ensure that, that won't happen going forward if you can do so? Yes. Um, as we communi communicated the 7th of October that we uh, suspended a large customer. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge project with a lot of engineering in. So it's actually touching exactly about what is our problem today. 
We are going into project that requires a lot of engineering. So there is also a lot of uncertainty about scope and how the system is going to look like. Of course, we have a contract in place to regulate that. But sometimes the parties cannot agree about the scope. And that's the situation here. So it's not something that happened from one day to another. It's in, in a long journey where we at the end saying we are absolutely uh, convinced that what you are uh, uh, um, are asking us to deliver, expand what we have agreed. And we, for a long time, have the assurance from the customers, we're going to solve this, we're going to agree on it. But at some time, you also need to put your foot down and say, enough is enough. So we told them, if we don't resolve this now, we're going to stop the work. So that's what we did. And um, that's very un unfortunately. Um, this is... Uh, the, the nature of this industry as we is today, there's a lot of, uh, of engineering in, in our deliveries. So the best answer actually to avoid this is saying we're still going to have risk in contracts in government space. But we can eliminate some of this risk by having a relative less portion of this engineering in our contracts where that can easily uh, get conflicts between uh, the, the customer and the supplier as us. So that's why our solution to avoid this in the future is actually our strategy. It is to have much higher product content in our deliveries. Makes sense. Thank you so much. Um, looking a bit further ahead, we do now see a more clear strategy of where you're aiming to be at, getting more product into your, your pipeline as well. But going from today to that point in, let's say, 2025, as you mentioned, you will need capital to invest and actually facilitate the strategy. And we, we see what you're doing now. You have the EIB, you're doing a right issue next year as well. In terms of this right issue, could you give us some more nuances to the, the timeline, potential dilution, what should investors look for here? Yeah, maybe maybe starting. Uh, it stated also like this will require us uh, investing both in OPEX and CAPEX to fulfill a goal in the magnitude of 46 million euro. And that's what we're financing with that. But there's, uh, there's a lot of steps in that. First, we need to reduce some of our offerings today. And then we need to expand on something else. And that's where we, we are aiming for building up the products, having it more standardized. It's actually going a little up in the standard platform too. And uh, that's the first thing we have to do. A satellite consists of uh, 40 sub-products, solar panels, reaction wheels, battery packets, uh, motherboard, process and so on. So we need to do a lot of product enhancement of those. So it's not that we're going to do something new, but we're going to enhance what we already know about. So we have a, we have a very good knowledge about what the market requires, how to deliver those systems. We, we know that already. So that's the first thing we'll do. When we then have those products ready, we at the same time also need to uh, ensure much higher uh, quality and reliability. As it is today, most satellites are uninsured because nobody will insure them. We will not be able to move in the value chain before we can have our satellite fully all risk insured in space. Of course, you have the liability insurance in place, but you need to have the products in such a state, and nobody is having that today. We need to have our products in such a quality and reliability state that it can be fully insured. When they can be fully insured, we can also start out mitigating the risk. We can transfer the risk from the operator and from the manufacturer to insurance company if they have data enough. And when you can transfer some of the risk, you can also start in to have lower capital coming into this industry. So that's the phase. So that's, that's the end goal. But they have to require the product content go up, the quality and reliability also to be on an insurable level. And then you can start up growing and financing, go into this satellite infrastructure as a service. We see a lot of our competitors already today are in the satellite infrastructure as a service. Uh, it's, it's a, and I, I think it's, it's a good... It's a good selling story because recurring revenue is a big thing. But you have to have recurring revenue without taking all the risk on yourself. And we are not willing to take that risk because the products are not in a state where we can bear that risk in GOM space. 
And then looking ahead for next year, when you will have a likely right issue, do you have any more details on the timeline here and what uh, yes, what that will center around? Uh, timeline, we said that uh, we'll come up, we'll, we'll perform this rights issue uh, beginning of next year. There is already the mandate from the ADM to issue, to to go ahead uh, with a with a rights issue. So it's all existing shareholders being invited. Uh, we put out the, the volume. We said we need between 100 to 125 million. The convertible loan will be converted, and so a little less than half of that is kind of secured already. Uh, but of course, depending if all shareholders uh, subscribe, then it's not going to to be fully fully utili utilized that loan. Th that loan is uh, provided by the two largest uh, uh, shareholders, um, Peter Hargrave uh, and also the board members and uh, the, the CEO and the CFO and the entire management team in that, uh, that convertible loan. Um, I, we, we don't have, um, we have only said the, 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 the amount and the timing, and it is going to be a rights issue to existing shareholders. It's also due that we took in as a, a, a strategic important investor in the beginning of March, and we also want to have the existing shareholders able to participate in this. So that's one thing. We have not determined the, the condition. Uh, we know there will be a lot of speculation about what will the discount, how many shares can you subscribe for having with the existing shares. That is not uh, determined yet. Um, to be honest, looking here and then looking into first quarter next year uh, in, in the market that we're facing, we, we have decided that will not be uh, the best strategy to, to put some specific on it. But we're being very clear. It's the right issue to existing shareholders. And, uh, of course, you will have some kind of dilution effect if you do not participate in this. And uh, and it could also be uh, yeah, major. If, if you don't want to participate, of course, in a rights issue, there will be some kind of discount in, in this rights issue to, to, make, to make it work. Yeah. But uh, last time we went out uh, with a rights issue that was significantly higher, we had no backup, and we subscribed around 85% of that. This time it's significantly lower. And we have close to half of it already pre-committed through this convertible loan. Duly noted. Thank you so much for the presentation today, Tools. We will conclude the presentation here. Thank you so much for being. Thank you. Thank you.